Father. And uh, it's going to be part two for sure. I'm going to bring you up to speed again with a couple of these scriptures. But I believe that this is a, this is a message. This is my prosperity message. <laughs> Church, you going to let me preach prosperity? Amen. <laughs> Only if it's in the Word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we submit unto you, God. We ask you for the anointing, the leading of the Holy Spirit, the emphasis of the Holy Spirit, the moving and the operation, Father God, of the Spirit. Father God, in us all, Father God, we just pray, Father God, that you would bring this to light and life as you see fit today, Father, for the glory of God. In Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. I started off last week talking about how I believe God, uh, according to the riches of His glory, Philippians 4.19, if you have that and you want to pull that up, we'll, we'll look at that as a text this morning. But he says, My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. And I found that to be true, but I, I want to tell you, uh, the premise of last week's message is where I'll start today, that I believe God gives, gives us our needs, but He also gives many of our wants along the way. Okay? <clears throat> and I knew I wouldn't get a, a lot of amen saying that, but uh, that's okay, because I want you to know, I want you to really know the, the character of your God, and who He is, and what He's all about. And, and most of the time, against unsurmountable odds, God will break through and He'll bring grace to your life. He'll bring uh, favor to your life. He'll bring power to your life. And so sometimes God gives us our wants, okay? And I'm going to prove that to you in Scripture. I believe this is straight out of Scripture. And you guys will correct me if I'm not. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, and I gave examples of like when my basement was flooding and, and, and God brought help from afar. I gave examples about a man dying in a deathbed and God sending me in there and we we're just praying that we'd plant seeds, but God did better than that. Amen. God did better than that. He saved that man's soul. Amen? Amen. He's a good father. I, I think about all the things that Sarah and I have needed along the way. What we needed was shelter and He gave us a house. What we looked for in this room was a place where we could gather the youth and maybe rent it for $500 a month. You know, oh, the little feeble thinking of, of, of a little man like myself. You know, maybe, maybe we can scrounge together, get $500 a month and rent this building. And God gave us the vision to, to buy the whole property. I, I believe that's good news, that God blows away our little minds and our finite thinking, and He wants us to step out in faith. Somebody say amen. amen. So when I need transportation, God gave me two cars instead of one so that yeah. me and my wife could go work. And I thank God for that. When we needed uh, 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 a miracle, when, uh, when we needed some answers with Kinsley, God gave us a miracle. When I didn't know even what else to pray, God gave us a miracle. Healed my little daughter. The, uh, the uh, x-rays in the hallway there on the wall. She was born without an esophagus. God gave her one in that moment and healed her totally to the glory of God. Amen? <clears throat> For both hospitals to see that God is a miracle working God. One of the doctors that was involved in that said that's about the sixth miracle I've ever seen in 40 some years of medicine. But it, I guarantee you it was. I guarantee you it was. So God's good. In Psalm 37, Psalm 37 this morning, verse 4. Bringing us up to speed quickly here. 37 verse 4. It says, Delight thyself also in the Lord. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. It doesn't say His heart. It says thine heart. Amen. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Commit thy way. Unto the Lord, trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. He's going to bring to pass the desire that He placed in your heart. And He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of Him who prospers in His way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. People that are getting rich quick, people that are doing this, don't worry about all that. Turn your eyes and focus upon Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. 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 What I want you to see is He gives us the desires of our heart. He created us. We're His children. We, the Bible says, are the very apple of His eye. The Bible says that He delights in us. 
He delights in us. How can he? He must if he wanted to save us. Amen. If he wanted to reach out and demonstrate his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He must love us. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ loves you today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but that all should come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God loves you today. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Do you believe that's the heart of your God? Amen. That's the heart of your God, to be the greatest missionary on planet Earth and to reach into the hardest hearts and the hardest places and to go to that place and, and to redeem a people for His namesake because He delights in saving. Amen? He's the ultimate Savior. He's a good God. You serve a wonderful God today. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Delight thyself in that God and He'll give thee the desires of thine heart. I love this uh, commentary. To delight in the Lord means to take pleasure in discovering more about Him and following His will. God's will for your life. Not my will, but thine be done. Amen? Amen. This leads to the Holy Spirit aligning our heart's desires with His, with God's desires, which God placed there anyway. They didn't come from you. They were birthed by God, put in you by God. Amen? Which always puts us in a position to experience the blessings of God. Now, I was showing that. That's why these things have come to pass in our life. That's why I'm testifying of, uh, of the house and the home and, the, and the, the miracles and the provision and the church and the radio ministry and all these things didn't come from Aaron. They came out of the mind and the heart of God and God created Aaron for these missions. Amen? Amen. He created you for the missions that He's placed in your heart. He's put thine desire, He's put desires in your heart that, that God could only think. The new man, the new creation in Christ could only think these kind of thoughts as they come together with the Holy Spirit and they bring a union and, and a one accord and a, a triple a, tr a triple braid that cannot be broken. And as this comes together, God puts longings in us. He puts longings and desires in us and wants inside of us that He wants to see come pass. Amen? Amen? We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works before the foundation of the world. Amen? Amen. 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 That is the truth. So help me God. So God does all this and He's an awesome God because guess what? He says, I'm going to meet every single one of your needs. Somebody say Amen. Amen. He'll meet all of your needs along the road. He'll meet every single one. He says He will. He says He will. His eyes on the sparrow. I know it's on me. Amen. Amen. Knows the amount of hair on my head. He knows everything that I need. He knows it even before I ask and pray. God knows all those things. And He says in that passage in Philippians uh, that my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, it says. Amen. But He seems to give us the desires of our hearts so many times. And that's, that's what makes this thing so much fun. Amen. So much fun. So interesting. So, so beneficial. Forget not as many benefits. Amen. Amen. Healing and restoration and salvation and, and, and good things from, from a good father to uh, 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 sons and daughters. How much more shall your heavenly father give good gifts to them that ask? How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost, it says in, in the other passage, to them that ask. You know, if, we're, if we being evil long to give our children good things, if we're carnal, we're just fleshly people, want to give good things to our family, how much more does God and our heavenly Father want to give good things to us? That's His nature. That's His life. That's why He's, he's great and, and awesome and holy. He's an awesome God, Alex Meyer. He's an awesome God. Amen? Amen. Turn, it, turn to Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. Let's read it together. This has been, I have brought this to Vermilion, South Dakota. I have brought this to Norfolk. I have brought this to Sioux City. I have brought this all week long. This has been a life-giving word to everyone I brought it to. It changed their life when I, when I started to explain this to them. So what that means is God gave me a little bit of revelation on this, and it's changing everybody I talk to. Somebody say amen. amen. <clears throat> now unto him that is able, God is able, okay? He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, A-double-L. 
He's, he's able to do unbelievably, exceedingly, abundantly above all, all being fullness, all being everything. He can do everything, church. He can blow it out of the water. He can blow your mind. He can blow your wildest dreams out of the water. He is he's greater and bigger than us. Amen. His thoughts are beyond us. His ways are not our ways. He is a great and good God, abundantly above all, it says, that we ask or think according to the power that worketh where, Joe? In us. Okay? Here's the commentary. Super abundantly above the greatest abundance that we may ask or even think according to the power that works in us. His ability, listen church, is connected to His willingness to help His sons and daughters. He is able to do it. Amen? He wants to do it. And He is willing to do it for you because you're His child and He's your Father. Amen? Amen. And He's a good, good Father. He wants to give good gifts out of the riches of His grace, out of the goodness and kindness of His favor. Praise God. I hope you're getting that. Are you getting what I'm laying down this morning? Go to 2 Peter 1.4. 2 Peter 1.4. Let's get a little bit more context because this is throughout the New Testament. Praise God. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. When you're there, say amen. amen. Okay. Verse 2. Okay. Grace and peace be subtracted. <laughs> Church, he's a God of multiplication. He, he multiplied the 5,000. Amen. He, he, he multiplied the loaves and the fishes. He, he is into taking that little pot of oil that that widow had and blessing that thing so that thing just keeps flowing and flowing. And she, he said, just keep pouring that thing out. Just pour that thing out. Pour that vessel out. And just keep filling vessels. Just keep filling vessels. And as long as you outpour, as long as you're pouring out, I'm going to outpour into you. Amen. As long as you're pouring out, put more in than you could constantly ever imagine. It doesn't matter if it's the loaves and fishes twice. doesn't matter if it's that situation or what it is. God is into multiplication. And I want you guys to know it. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the, through the knowledge of God and of our Lord and of Jesus our Lord according to His divine power hath given unto who? Us. us. All things. He's given unto us all things. Do you see it? He's given us to us everything in Christ Jesus that pertains unto life, everything you need in life, and everything you need in godliness, which is piety or holiness. I looked it up. I want to know what these words are talking about. He's going to give you everything that you need in life. He's going to meet your every need, okay? And then He's going to give you everything that pertains to life and godliness. And that godliness means glory and virtue and manliness. There's going to be a man stand up inside of every man, woman, and child. And he is Jesus Christ, the divine nature. Amen? It's the power of God. It's the Son of God. Hallelujah. Four. Whereby are given unto us. There's the second given. He's a giving God unto us. Exceedingly great and precious Promises. Amen. 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 Yeah, give the Lord a hand clap of praise because He's given to us all of these things that are exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. That by these promises, all the promises in the Bible, everything that's promised in the Bible, you need to just take this and highlight the heck out of it because it's all for you, okay? You might be a partaker of the divine nature. The divine nature is the new nature, the new man created in righteousness and true holiness. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. Escaped the thing. Amen. Been delivered from it. Amen. Been born again. Amen. We've escaped those things. Now God is in us and now all things are of, of God. As we become a new creation in Christ, we're set apart and sanctified and washed and cleansed by the washing of regeneration through the word of God. Amen. Titus passage. Praise God. God has done this he's put he says put on the new man walk in this thing and you'll and he says walk in the spirit and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh amen yeah. he's given us a power and a boldness and the ability 
to now walk in the authority of Jesus Christ, to walk in as a joint heir, as a son, as a child, as a king's kid, as, a, as the power of God unto salvation. The gospel emanates through me and in me and is, is in every cell of my life. He begins to take over. He begins to, to mold my thoughts and transform my mind. Amen. By the renewing of your mind, the renewing, making your mind new. Amen. Transforming your very thoughts into the patterns and the thoughts of what God would think himself. And now God's thoughts are flowing through you and you want the things of God. Amen. And you're now you're in an altar and you're asking for the things of God. God, I'm, I'm asking you for the things of God. And I want those things. And dear God, every single one of those things comes to pass. God brings them to pass. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, that should get an amen in this house. But it's true for me. It's true for every single person. Dad, I want to tell you, you knew how I grew up. You know what I was all about. Brett, you do too. Uh, Matt, uh, I don't know where Matt is, but, but I'll track him down. But he can vouch for this. Could, would if you have seen me in maybe 2000 or 99 or, or 98 wanting to go to the Omaha Indian Reservation and giving uh, three and a half years of my life to planting a church in a <clears throat> in the fire hall, we called it fire hall gospel ministries for a while there, and to give four years of my could you have seen that in ninety eight or ninety nine before my before my conversion to Christ? Was that anything that you thought that I was ever going to do, Dad, to go and and to be a part of uh, <clears throat> helping the Omaha Indians to to find Jesus Christ? Yes or no? <laughs> no. <laughs> absolutely not. Okay? No, absolutely not. What I'm saying is something changed in me, okay? Something got a hold of me, amen? Something changed my heart's desires, but God gave me the desire to cry aloud and spare not until that thing happened. Until it came to pass, amen? To pray the prayer of faith. To, to believe God for, for a, a move of God. And dear God, thank God that He did. Church, what I'm saying is we can be partakers of the divine nature. Amen. We can be partakers of the mind of Christ. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians, that you have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm preaching the Bible today, amen? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. That was Christ's mind given unto us. So I was a conduit to think a thought, pray a prayer, but he was going to do it all along. Amen? Amen. He's put all these things in us. All these, er, all these thoughts, these desires, these wants to see our families change. And, and he wants that more than you want it. He says, ask of me and I'll give you the heathen for thine inheritance. He says, ask of me. And I'll give you the heathen. I'll give you the nations is what that means. Ask me and I'll give it because I want it. But if I burden you for it, that means you're to pray. Amen. You're to become a prayer warrior until that thing, that desire comes to pass. And you know what? We can testify. Dear God, he did it. He showed me two churches. I'm standing in the second church right now. Amen. He showed me a radio station. It's going out. It broadcast this morning. Somebody say amen. amen. That was not my idea. That was not my plan for my life, Brett. You know it. But God did it as God birthed a new thought and a new mind and a new heart and a new motive out of a changed creation. Amen. And dear God, it feels good today to know that God's will will be done when we will to do the will of God. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Dear God, hallelujah. Let's will to do the will of God. Rivers overflow. Blessings overflow. Grace overflows. Our God is good. Jeremiah 29, 11. Let's go there. <clears throat> Praise God. As long as you give me a voice, I'm going to preach this morning, Ellie. If not, I'm handing the mic to her and she'll preach. Praise God. Praise God. Everyone's a preacher. Everybody's a minister. Amen? Every single one of us. For I know the thoughts. I know the thoughts. God is thinking tremendously all the time about who? Us. Did you know that you're the delight of God? I read it in Psalms just this week as I was just going through my Psalms. God delights in man. God delights in us. I know the thoughts that I think, think towards you. Here's, here's the word, amen, that I think towards you. Saith the Lord, thoughts, there it is again, he's thinking, he's imagining, he's thinking all the time of peace. Here's the word, it's shalom. You heard of it? Yeah. Here's the definition. 
well, happy, friendly, welfare, health, prosperity, peace, friendship, health, prosperity, rest, safe, holy. That's what God is thinking about towards you all the time. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Here's the word evil, ra. You've heard me preach on that, right? Sounds like boo, boogeyman just came out of a closet. Whoa, ra, right? Sounds bad. It says not of ra, not of ra, not of adversity, affliction, bad calamity, distresses, not of grievous, harmful, heavy, mischiefs, miseries, noise. God doesn't want those things for his children. Somebody say amen. 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 He's going, uh, I'm just to stick, stick to my text. He wants to give us an expected end. I'm in seven, right? And to give us an expected end. Here's, this is what I was ministering to Marty on last night. To give you an expected end. I want to read that again just so I get thoughts, thoughts, thoughts and thoughts and thoughts of peace, not raw. To give you an expected end, okay? This is the expected end. Hope. Life. The thing that I long for, according to the Strong's Bible Dictionary. I am here to give you what you are expecting to receive. That's prosperity. That's real prosperity from the real Word of God. Amen. What are you praying for, seeking, and expecting? I am there to give you what you are longing for. Thoughts and thoughts of peace. And, and the word peace, break it down, you look it up. There is health, there is prosperity, there is welfare, there is goodness, there is all of those things. And those are my thoughts towards you to give you that expected end. To give you what you're hoping for. Marty, are you hoping to be healed? Then let's believe right now because I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. And I said, something snapped in me. I said, dear God, are you expecting it? Then it's going to come to pass. God put that desire in you to have a hope. God put a desire into you to have a hope today, Christian. Amen. You came to the right service this morning today. He loves you. Amen. He's a good God. And He has a plan. And a good father wants to give good gifts to his sons and daughters. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Where are we? Expected in. I said it the other day. He's given me an imagination. He's made me a dreamer. God made me that way. He made Joseph a dreamer. Amen. Joseph had dreams when he was a little kid. They, they, they all mocked him his whole life. But I tell you what. They tried to kill him. They couldn't take the dream. Prison couldn't take the dream away from that man. Amen. God put a dream in your heart. He gave you imagination. Don't you let anybody shut the thing down. Keep dreaming that dream. The Bible says in the book of Acts that in the latter days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your old men are going to dream dreams and your young men are going to prophesy. Amen. 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 And on my handmaidens and maidens, I'm going to pour out of my spirit in that day upon every single one of you guys. And the Holy Ghost is going to move again. And God's alive today. Amen. And he's doing it right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't let anybody steal. I still have an imagination. It's not gone away. I'm going to use that for God. And I'm going to believe that God is, is with me. And I'm going to be steered by the Word of God. Not by how I feel, but by the faith of, of the Word of God. And I'm going to be led in these things. And God is going to bring them to pass. Amen? Amen. 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 If you believe that, praise God. But I think we get the wrong picture. And you're like, this is, this is what we're like. We're like... Oh, man, that sounds so good. We're like, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. God's saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Stop, 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 stop. What do you think? What do you think I'm going to do? Prosper you so much that you can just write out a check for an orphanage and help people out? That I'm going to bless you to some place where, where you're, you're just going to walk into a room, lay hands, and they're going to be healed? Whoa, come on, that's getting a little extravagant. That's, that's a lot to ask the God of this universe. And we're like, whoa, why would God want to do that? You ask way too much, son or daughter. You're asking way too much for this God to be able to do that when He commanded us to go and do those things. He said, I'll be with you to the end of the age. 
Dear God, we've got the wrong picture of our God. He's a good Father. If He asks you to give, where does that nature come from? I said it last week. If He asks you to be a giver, a cheerful giver, a hilarious giver, where does that come from? It comes from the nature of the Father God Himself. He wants that nature to be in you. It's a new nature. Amen. You were probably greedy and covetous before that, but this new nature wants to do a lot of things. And I think people are living in guilt and condemnation and shame if they ask their God for any good gift along the way. And I think we, we keep rebuking ourselves for wanting something that God may have put in our heart all along, maybe a desire that God gave us, and we're not going to ask Him for it anymore. Because that's selfishness, that's prideful, that's materialistic, that'll puff me up, that, you know what? And what we need is a lot of people to just lay on us. <clears throat> well, I, what are you for in this church? What are you here for in this church? Well, Pastor, I'm here to make sure you never get out of line. Well, get off my back. I'm here to make sure you don't follow this thing. I'm here to, to make sure that you're on. I'm here to shut you. I'm here to keep you humble. I'm here to. Well, thanks a lot. God must have sent Christians to do the work of the devil. Are you with me? Amen. I not only got monkeys on my back, I got Christians on my back. What the heck? Is that biblical? No, dream the dream, brother. Dream the dream that God has put in you. Somebody say amen. 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 Wanting has a bad reputation in Christian circles. Godliness with contentment is great gain. I'm just trying to get through the intro. We're supposed to accept what He gives. And we know that He'll meet all our needs, so we're supposed to stop wanting. Is that right? Is that how we've been raised? But if you don't want anything, then you'll probably never ask for anything. The Bible says in James, you have not because you... Or you ask it, and it fouls out on your lust or whatever. But what if He gave you the thought and conceived it and birthed it? Go help the, the, the Omaha Indian Reservation. And then I'm over there, and the Holy Spirit starts dealing with me after about three and a half years. There's tragedy in Cumming County. <clears throat> I feel the Holy Spirit dealing with me. I'm over there. I'm over, this is into two years or whatever. I'm like, Lord Jesus, what about my people? And I said, this is, listen to me. I said this, and God knows it's the truth. I've watched my sister in Christ, Pat Phillips, Native American lady. I love her. She's a saint of God. You guys know her and love her as well. I saw the desire of her heart come to pass. I saw the gospel. She said, she said it. She said, my people have not been served, but they're served today. Amen? Amen. We serve a good God, and there's a powerful gospel yes. in Wald Hill, Nebraska today. Amen. I saw her heart's desire from Christ be answered. And the echo of my heart was, Dear Jesus, my people have not been served this gospel. The exact same cry that was on her heart for her people. God, what about my people? Where's the church? Where's the churches? Where are the churches that are preaching the blood bought? Where are preaching, where's the churches preaching the cross? Where's the churches that are preaching under the anointing? Where's the preachers that aren't afraid of the Holy Spirit? Where, where are these things in this land? And I began to look around and look around. God, you showed me there'd be a second church. Where is it? And who can we get to preach there? Yeah. And it was quiet in heaven. I had preached one message in my life and I had sang a few worship songs. And it was quiet in heaven. But God was echoing to me from the time I was a little boy. My Uncle Gary's here from Alabama. I remember on a summer just like this, years and years and years ago, almost 40 some years ago, I'm five years old. I'm going through the sliding glass door at Grandma Trimble's. Grandpa and Gary are sitting there. Gary's still alive. I'll see him later today and visit him. Grandpa said to Gary, I believe that boy's going to preach the gospel. He's going to be a preacher. 
God's starting to echo these, all these things. Aaron, I've given you a burden for this area. But I want to go. I'm going to go East Coast, West Coast. I want to go to missions all around the world. And three different men of God came up and they said, until you've proved this in your own backyard, you've got no right to go anywhere. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, three times in a row. And church, God was showing me the kind of death that I was going to die to glorify God. Are you with me? But we stay too long in the glory and the glory of, the, of that altar. Now we have to go into that altar and every church that preaches the cross should preach a death to self. Amen. You with me on that? But what happened after Jesus died? Did he stay there in the bowels of hell? He rose again. And he walked a resurrection life. And he had a new body on this earth. Amen. He walked through walls and everything else. My God, church, we have to walk in the resurrection. Amen. Amen. Dead to self, but alive to God through the, through the Holy Spirit that He sent down on the day of Pentecost to every single child, to my, your children and your children's children. As long as the God of heaven is on the throne, He'll always call this way. And dear God, He wants to do that to every single person. Amen. He wants to restore that message to this area. And I believe this is virgin territory all the way up through Wyoming and Montana and the Dakotas and Nebraska. I don't believe they've heard the gospel in which we believe and preach. Amen. Amen. Now, why in the world does God give us a voice for radio? I didn't do that either. That was God. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. But wanting, we, we seem to think that it's, it's selfish and I'm greedy. And <clears throat> You promise to supply all my needs, but does He promise to supply all my wants? Maybe not every one of them. They've got to be tried by the Word of God. But if God put it into your heart, it's going to come to pass. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Now oh, that's my intro. And I'm going to start preaching a new message. Go to Matthew 11:24 today. <clears throat> Matthew eleven twenty four. 24. In the New Living Bible, the King James Version. <clears throat> In the New International Bible, the King James Version. I'm just joking with you guys. You guys can have whatever Bible in this church that you want to. Amen? We're, praise God. You guys can laugh in church and be happy. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Look at this. Okay, therefore I say unto you... Whatsoever thing, what things soever ye desire. You see that? Go ahead and mark it down. When you pray, believe. I got, I, sorry, Mark. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, my bad. What did I say? <clears throat> you guys are trying me by the word this morning. Amen. <laughs> what a church. You guys are the Bereans. Glory to God. <clears throat> I love you guys. God loves you guys. Amen? Amen. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray. Another word for desire is want, by the way. Are you there? Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. That's Jesus' words to you. Amen? Go ahead and mark it down. I'll give you another scripture that's pretty interesting. John 15, 16. John 15, 16. I'll go there. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Asking of the Father in my name. I believe name denotes character. You begin to ask in His name, in His character, in His boldness, with His heart. Church, these things are going to come to pass. Can I get an amen there? Amen. Go to the next chapter, John 16, 24. Just to turn a page. 16, 24. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Here's the admonition. Ask, and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Do you know what happens as a, as a kid? I'm out. You're out. 
Here? Is it that one or this one? A square one? I don't think I even need one anyway. But. <clears throat> he says, you, you guys aren't asking anything of me. You're not asking anything of me. Why don't you ask? Church, this is a big issue. We have been taught to be so content and that it's so wrong to have a desire and to even ask for that desire that we don't, we don't pray. And I've heard people say, oh, I'm not going to pray for myself. That would be, oh gosh, get over your false humility. That's what that is. That's a devil. You've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Do you know what happens when you start to receive the things you're asking for? You want to see me break dance all over the front of this room? Amen. <laughs> Because I go nuts when that happens. Because God just answered another prayer. And I'm like, God, you're so good. You're so awesome. Oh my God, you're real. This is, this is, this is alive. This is well. Church, I'm just reading the scripture this morning. Amen. Amen. We live in a day where Christians don't want to wake up in the morning. They don't want to go to work. They don't want to go to church. They don't want to go to revival. They don't want to go to prayer meeting. They don't want to do anything. But church, when, when your joy is full and God's doing things in your life, you want to come and testify. Amen? Amen. i got something to say today. God just did something. i got a testimony that the world needs to know about. I'm going to give a shout out to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My God, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe, and you're going to receive them that you have joy. Praise God. James 1.5. Let's go there. On the way there, I'll give you Hebrews 11.6. Without faith it's impossible to please Him, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Amen. My God, He wants you to seek Him. Seek Him. Bring those desires. Bring those yearnings. Bring those things to the foot of the cross. Begin to ask, seek, and knock, and you're going to receive. Somebody say Amen. amen. James 1.5 If any of you lack wisdom, dear God, that's me every day. I want wisdom. Let him ask of God that giveth, oh God, you're a giver, to all men, liberally. Well, what the heck does liberally mean? Got to go look it up. Liberally, Strong's Concordance. Bountifully. He wants you to have things richly, copiously, bountifully. Wow, are you serious? Why didn't somebody tell me about this gospel? Why didn't somebody tell me about the prosperity that's in Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. Why didn't somebody tell me, my God is, it owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and dear God, He wants to give unto me bountifully. And He says, and it shall be given Him. God's not just meeting my needs now, but God's meeting my wants, desires, yearnings. I'm using words in the Bible, okay? Let's go to this one, 1 John 3.21. 1 John 3.21. <laughs> so, gosh, you got to get my point here. Church, yes, our heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I would never put a lot on my heart or my feelings. But once my heart aligns with faith in Jesus Christ, I'm going to test my own thoughts by the Word of God. But if God keeps bringing that thing back to me, and He won't let me go, and I'm agonizing in prayer for a people, or, 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 or whatever the thing is, whatever that desire is, that's from God, and it's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. Don't let the rain push it away. Don't let the clouds diminish it. Don't let rust uh, take its shimmer off. Don't let, it, don't let anything stop the, the calling of God, deep calling unto deep. That thing is going to come to pass. Every desire that's birthed of God will come to pass. And that's on top of all your needs being met. That's a good gospel. Somebody say amen. amen. 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not... Examine your heart. Amen? Then have we confidence towards our God. Amen. 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him. <laughs> Why? Because we keep His commandments. And we do those things that are pleasing in His sight. Are you with me on this? Yes. Wow. Amen. Whoa. 
Dear God, you think he's just going to throw out, yeah, I'm going to meet your needs, and every once in a while I'm going to flick a little, little, little biscuit at you. No, that's not your God. Oh, God, let me get into this for a little while. <clears throat> John 15, 7 and 8. I think I, I think I had you at 7, but I'll just read it to you. If, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done for you. Herein is my Father glorified when He does stuff for us. When my words abide in you and you ask what you will and it's done for you, herein is my Father glorified. Amen? Why? Because you guys are sharing testimonies everywhere of what God just did. Amen? And God's saying, that's my son. I just gave him that. My God, it was awesome. He asked and I gave it. That you bear much fruit, much more of this all the time, so that so shall you be my disciples. Now here's the difference. I want to make this. Ask what you will is different than the theology today. Here's the theology today. You ready for this? If it be thy will. Yeah. Lord, if it be thy will, I pray, but only if it's your will. And I don't know if it's your will, so... Nothing's going to happen, because now you're in James chapter 1 and you're wishy-washy. And you're not going to receive nothing from God. Because he that's moved around by that is unstable in all his ways. Right? That's the doctrine of, t Lord, if it be thy will. It sounds so humble. And it's a devil. Look at this. That's like saying, <clears throat> I know you have already promised and you've made it very clear by your word that it is your will. But do you really mean what you say, God? concerning anything that's already been promised in the Word of God that you have made clear through your Word by giving us the Word of God and providing that we ask in faith nothing waver, wavering. What, you, what we're basically saying is, are you truthful, God, or not? Can we depend upon what you say? Because if it be thy will, well, I guess I don't know your will. Church, can we know the will of God? Yes. Do you see how false that is? That is a false doctrine that's come about in our time. And I'm sick to death of it. We can know the will of God because we can read the will of God. What is the matter? I feel like God is saying that. What's the matter with, have I not told you repeatedly that, that I would do it? Can you not take me at my word? Are you going to make me a liar? We wouldn't do this to an earthly person, but we'll do it to our God every day of the week. Lord, if it be thy will. Is that in there? Doesn't it say, ask what you will? I'm quoting scripture out of the King James Bible. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, come on. Romans 8.32 says this, If he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how much more, <clears throat> how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Why aren't we asking him? I think we've been duped. I think this false humility thing is just to, to the point where it negates every single Christian from ever asking God for nothing. So there's no miracles, and then there's no testimonies, and there's no signs, and there's no wonders, because we don't want those things in our church. Church, everything outside of Jesus and salvation is a want. I want to stay married. You see my wife? She's beautiful. <laughs> I want to stay married to her. <laughs> Amen. I want to be happily married, don't you? Anybody else want? Amen. Have a desire? Amen. That's evil to think that way. Do you think God's saying, <clears throat> I gave you a wife, Aaron. Now you're asking me to give you a happy one? <laughs> what do you think I am? You're asking me way too much. You keep coming. You're, you're busying me far too much with, these, with your infernal racket. How dare you want for... You're lucky you're married at all. You know what I'm saying? No, but God, I, I just want to be happily married. And I, I, I won't ask you again for anything. I, 
shame, I feel shame and guilt and condemnation and I, I'll never come to you again because you, I'm content in all things. And I, And so I'll never ask again, and I'll live my Christian life never asking you for any gift or any desire that's ever been on my heart because you may have had an earthly father that was like that. This is not your earthly father. Copiously, richly, abounding, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think, oh my God, he's a good father. Church, he's a good father. He's a good father. Boldly come into my throne room and obtain from me. Ask, seek, and knock, and it shall be given unto you. Everything you ask, I'm going to give. Hallelujah. Church, I'm just reading scripture to you. You can call me Joel Osteen, but he's got nothing on what I'm talking about. I threw that out for Mary. Church, I'm just telling you. I've got a lot of wants. <clears throat> I want to see a youth ministry. I want to see this. I want to see all these things. I'm going to go. Let me just go to the end of this because I could preach this for the next 52 weeks probably. But church, do you like this kind of a message? Amen. Jesus makes me happy. I'm blessed. Amen. I want to be a happy pastor, a happy evangelist. Yes, I'm going to have grief in my life. Yes, we're going to go through trials. But is it selfish? And is it greedy for me to want to be blessed by God? To enjoy Christianity? To, enjoy, to have the joy of the Spirit within me? Amen? To want good things for my family? Is that greedy? <clears throat> for my children, for my marriage, for our homes, for our nation, is it wrong for me to ask God to bring revival to America? No. Is it wrong for me to be positive? Was, was, was David positively thinking when, he, when he, he was getting stirred up with a sling in his hand? How long? We're going to let this knothead. I'm taking this guy out. Something was stirring in that man. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't positive thinking. That was Jesus thinking. We need Jesus thinking all over this house. Amen. Jesus to take down every devil, every Goliath, everything that stands in our way. Amen? Amen. Let me try and fit this one in. I, I had a pastor friend who was telling a story. I'm going to try to repeat that story. But he had been so brought up in the church, so brought up in the things that I'm talking to you about. And he had a heart to go and minister. And he, he, he wanted to raise his family in a place where there was like an acreage and, and, and a farm and, a, and, and he liked the big sky and all these things. And, and uh, <clears throat> he was praying to the Lord and he heard the Holy Spirit say, what do you want? And my pastor friend, he said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And he was praying again, and, and the Holy Spirit spoke very softly. He said, tell me what's in your heart. What do you, what do you desire? What do you want? <laughs> and the guy turned around, and he said, I rebuke that voice in the name of Jesus. I bind you, Spirit. You will leave my house. And the voice came again. What is it that you desire? What is it that you want? And finally... He was rebuking the same Jesus that came to Paul on the Damascus Road. He was kicking against the pricks, kicking against the goats. He says, what is it you really want? And, and the pastor said, I just want to raise, I feel like I'm being led or called to, to this kind of an area. And the guy, guy went and got in the shower, came out, <clears throat> and he wrapped the towel around himself, and the phone was ringing. And he comes out and grabs the phone, and, and somebody calls from Wyoming, says, we're going to go plant a church in, near Denver, Colorado, and God's placed you upon my heart that you would help me start and plant this church. You're going to have to move. But that was the, within that moment. God just went to work. Because God had already put that, on, that desire in his heart, and now it just was manifest, going to come to pass. Church, that's how this thing works. But we, we, we just, we're rebuking God half the time because we think if God's given us a desire that it's an evil thing. 
Pat Phillips got her people to hear the gospel. Aaron Trimble got his answer granted for Cumming County and Thurston and Dodge. Amen? Amen. God gave us the radio. God gave us, God gave us the church. We got it. The house, the healing, the vehicles, the propane. When we needed propane, God put a $500 deal in our... You know what I'm saying? Over and over, time and time again, God's a great, great God. God's an awesome God. He cares so much for us. And church, I just want you to see that if God be for you, then who can be against you? Amen. With God, all things are possible. Amen? I'm going to try to quit with this thought. We falsely see our God, listen to this, sternly demanding us to live things we don't want to live and like things we don't want to like and do things we don't want to do and avoid pleasant experiences at all costs. Is that your God? Sternly demanding us to live things we don't want to live. Like things we don't want to like. Do things we don't want to do. Avoid pleasant experiences at all costs. If you're having too much of a good time, cease from doing that immediately. Stop it. That's enough out of you. That's an angry father. The parable of the talents I gave two or three weeks ago, it said, I thought you to be stern. I thought you to be an austere man. You remember that? That was the perception of the wicked servant. He didn't know his father. He didn't know his father at all. Church, it's not true. It's not true at all. I'm going to close with this. <clears throat> three things you can do to live a life seeming your desires. Three things you can do to see your desires met by Jesus Christ. Here it is. Eliminate all evil and selfish wants and desires. Just, just get them out of the way. I could go into that and teach on it. I probably will Wednesday. You know if you're coveting your neighbor's wife. That's an evil desire. Don't do that. You know if you're uh, coveting money and you're just thinking, how can I get rich quick? Eliminate that. Study to show yourself approved. Get in the Word. Figure out what is right and what is wrong. Amen? You have a Bible. Number two, illuminate all the good ones. Take all the precious promises that God has ever given you, every jot and every tittle, and, and get into the Word and believe the Word of God. Amen? And have faith in the Word of God. Trust in the Lord. Amen? Trust in God. Ask God for marriage. Ask God for life. Ask God for a good marriage or, or kids that, are, that get saved at the youngest of age. Begin to ask God for those good things. Amen? Number three. Activate your wants through actions. Well, my blood pressure is, uh, is high, <clears throat> but I, I, I love eating donuts. In fact, can you meet me at Long John Silver's and we're going to get some fish and chips and then we're going to go over to McDonald's for a McFlurry to wash the thing down with. Lord God, I hope you can sanctify the fact that I'm going to have this triple death by chocolate brownie fudge shake. And I hope the new covenant will erase the calories that I'm about to intake. God can do anything, but he's not going to sanctify disobedience. Amen? Ever. Ever. So activate all, but listen to this, this will help you. Once you realize the wants or desires of your, uh, that God has placed upon your heart, God will release an action plan to go get them. So pray. Because He'll talk to you in prayer, and He'll talk to you in the Word of God. And He wants to prosper you all.